Welcome back to Star Wars Nerds Unite, a discussion and review podcast focused on the new Star Wars canon. I am your host, Tim Van Ontriv. Joining me as always are Josh, Mason, hi, and Jennifer Van Ontriv. Hi guys. Hello. That's awkward. Well, I was going to give your nickname, but apparently it's unwelcome by the internet. By so, one person on the internet? So I decided to give in to peer pressure, and you just won't have a nickname anymore. Perfect. Uh, we have 22 letters from the last episode. That's a lot. Um, that doesn't even count any Facebook or Twitter interaction. Uh, fan yeah. f- fan feedback is... is Sky here. high. It's at all-time highs, and I love it. Today we're going to talk about Rogue One, a Star Wars trailer. <laughs> a Star Wars story trailer. trailer. Uh, the trailer. Right, which dropped six days ago. If we were smart, we would have recorded the day it dropped and we would have been famous. More famous. My wife is giving me the universal, <laughs> you're, 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 going too much. To, you're going too fast symbol. Uh, you need to slow it down. Fast, draw means... it out. <laughs> Stop drawing it out. Just get to it. Okay, well, then why don't you tell us what happens in the trailer, Jenny? Oh, Break it I down have for no us. Idea. Well, I want to get right to it. Yeah, so you better get you it. better get to it. Well, there's this young girl. Uh, okay, she's Josh. She's some kind of criminal, and the rebels have brought her in for a secret mission. Why did they bring her in? Uh, she steals things, and well. I just watched the international trailer, which I had never watched before, and um, they got, well, they found out about the weapons test and from some secret communication from her father. Yeah. So. That's why they brought her in. Yeah. So that's, like, way cooler than any other trailer. Why wouldn't they have that in that little tidbit and everything? Mystery. Oh, success. Success. Josh broke the mount on his microphone and left a piece of the screw in it for the bolt. I broke, I snapped the bolt in half with my strength. With his brute strength. Yes. And I just fixed it. All right. Got it out. Did you watch the international trailer, Tim? No, I haven't seen it. You didn't know about that. I didn't even know about it. Oh my gosh, I just blew your mind. Yeah. Yeah, So, who the heck's her father? We don't know. Probably someone with the last name Urso. Frank Urso. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he sounds like an accountant. Yeah, he is. He probably is an accountant, yeah. <laughs> He's a Bond Company stooge for the, the Empire. So Jin Urso is that person's name, played the by girl? Felicity Jones. Yeah. Yeah. The girl. So uh Forrest Whitaker talks to her a little bit. I have to say, like, he looked the least offensive I've I've ever seen him. So I think <laughs> Gosh. Disney must have heard what I said and like really made him clean up his act. Um, well, you're you have a lot of pull in the Star Wars community now. <laughs> he, I had to like take a double take because for a second I thought he fixed his lazy eye, and nope. then I was like, oh, oh no, he didn't. He but didn't. it's not it's not as horrible as it normally looks. Jennifer's feelings do not echo my own. They do not. Uh, Tim loves the. Lazy you love eye. Forrest Whitaker. They do not. That's not Star Wars Nerds Unites official. What are you talking about? Stance. Stance. What? He's saving are face you, for you, when we eventually yeah. interview Forrest Whitaker. Are you Whitaker, pro right? lazy I don't, eyes? I don't, I don't, you wish everyone had one. I just don't think that we should pick on people. For I'm not. Things oh, can't that control. poor famous millionaire. I'm not picking on him. I just think, why hasn't he gotten that fixed? He's on. Forrest Whitaker uh, plays filmed. Saw Gerrera, and we've seen Saw Gerrera before. Josh in the Clone Wars. Where did we see him oh. in the Clone Wars? We did see him in the Clone Wars. He was like a a separatist, well, a, not a separatist, but a he was uh, a freedom fighter. Freedom fighter. Uh, and then who's the Asian guy that looks like he's got like his he'd be blind or something? His Chirrut eyes. Imwe. Is we he, don't know anything about him. His is he supposed to be blind? Yeah, he is blind. Okay. Uh, and then who is the guy, the um, Imperial officer in the white suit that looks like crazy? Orson Krennic. Who's We've he? talked about this before. I like that we're bringing it back up. When though. we did the teaser trailer, yeah, I don't remember any of that. Yeah, I barely remember the names. I don't remember the names. Never heard them before. Well, now we yeah. have to know them. We know them now. We have got them memorized. Krennic. He'll go by Krennic. Okay. So has he been on anything before? No, he's brand new. Is that Asian guy brand new? Uh, 
everyone in this in that trailer was brand new other than Mon Mothma yeah. or- and Saw Gerrera. Orson Krennic was the Imperial guy with the cape. The, right. And he's the director of advanced weapons research for the Imperial military. And he's obsessed with the Death with, Star. With finishing the, the Death Star, Star project. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, then there's the, um, the rebel that teams up with, what's her name? Jin? Jin Ursa, yeah. Cassian? Yeah. Yeah. I, he's very new too. Yeah. And he has his own droid. That's different. K2SO. Um, I we it's interesting because we talked about how droids either have like one of two personality types. Right. And I feel like this one is really in the middle. Like it is. it's exactly both personalities in one. Right. Which and is why new. I said there are more than two. There are more than because two. there are more than two. Well, you didn't know about this one yet. I don't have to. This the he the droid is like this big um Imperial Enforcer droid. Yeah. He looks huge. He's, He's an super imperial tall. droid. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He has the imperial they, symbol like, on, his, on his shoulder. Him? Cassian reprogrammed him. Yeah. Oh. He reminds me of Proxy from Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed, the video game. He's got kind of his temperament and voice a little. He's very well, dead. He sounds like a protocol droid. The way he spits out like statistics, like C three PO, and mm-hmm. but then he's kind of rude. And he's very blunt. Yeah, and like, it doesn't not, care he's about. He's not programmed for etiquette. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on the T-shirt that no. you own? No. Oh. It's on the hat. It's on, yeah, it's on my <laughs> hat. It's on his hat. Programmed for etiquette. Oh. I left it. It's downstairs because I wore it. Oh. I was like, that sounds familiar. It sounds like it's something that would be on a dumb on T-shirt. A, on an amazing uh, on a hat. hat. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense on a hat. A flat bill. So. Um, what do you guys think of the droid as he talked and talked about oh, the I odds? Did. And I thought he was cool. I did too. I think it's even cooler that he was an Imperial droid. He's going to bring humor, but it won't be like slapstick humor. So it'll keep it somewhat serious. It won't be like R2-D2 yeah. just like, like igniting something on fire. Right. Yeah, I think it'll be more like humor from the first trilogy as opposed to humor from the... Second well, yeah, there was still slapstick humor in the first one with 3PO and R2. Yeah, but not like... I think it'll be way less, more subdued. Not like when they're flying around the the droid. Well, more. sure. It won't be a gung and stepping in poop. This I love the tone of this trailer. It's so dark. Yeah. And... Uh, Foreboding. And... Yeah, but it just seems like... It seems like uh, Suicide Squad, but they did it right. Like you get all these people together that Can are completely we just different. Strike Suicide Squad from ever being spoken about again. Oh, did you go see it? No, I'm not going to. Gee, it's one of the worst movies I've <laughs> ever seen. It's so bad. Let's stop talking about it. Did then. we talk about it on this podcast before? Yes. No, okay. we didn't. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. I couldn't remember. In I the talked, last episode, I talked about we it talked on about Comic it. Nerds Unite. Um, yeah, we're done. Finished. We recorded like the day after you watched it. Oh, okay. So I you don't were in think prime. So. Hate mode. Okay, whatever. Mm, I don't know. I do know. Okay, we've talked about it. Fine. Uh, so, how about that scene where the Star Destroyer is over that plateau? So that planet, everyone on the internet thinks it's Jeddah. So we know about Jeddah, but we never seen the name associated with the actual planet. How do we know about Jeddah, Josh? From Star Wars Celebration. They talked about it. Mm. And it's Mecca for the Jedi. Mm. Isn't that where they get their... It's like a holy place. Where they get, it's a holy place. But they think it's... And they the get kyber are, crystals. That's where, yeah, they get kyber crystals. That's why the Empire's there. Because I, that's what they use to power the laser on the Death Star. I call them not crystals. power it. Sword rocks. That's how they focus the laser. Right. Yeah. So, so that's why they're there. That's why we presume they're there. So one theory on the internet, spoilers, is that uh, they put this team together with the intent of stopping them from, the Imperials from being able to harvest the kyber crystals. And then they end up turning it into a plan to grab the plans. That's a dumb theory. Yeah, that's one I heard. It sounded good enough to me. All right. It's dumb. Okay. Uh, Alan Doty solved it. Good work. Oh, good work, Alan. Good job, Alan. He'll re- probably listen to this when he mows his lawn in 15 years. Uh, then we also saw the, the tropical planet again. 
You that mean we, the Mediterranean jungle? Mediterranean jungle climate planet. Yeah. That we don't know a name for yet. Um, if you... So if you splice together the behind-the-scenes celebration stuff and the trailer and you kind of piece it all together... Yeah. You can... There's this we and then there's this other weird shot from Entertainment Weekly where there's a stormtrooper holding or a death trooper, the black stormtroopers, mm -hmm. holding a little stormtrooper doll. And so, the way the story goes, there's, if you piece it all together, they're merchandise in the Star Wars movies now. Well, it's like a it's like a handmade doll, like uh, oh. um, Ray, Ray's. the The idea is is that Jin and her father lived on. The planet that you see that has like all the black rock. Yeah. And the Imperials come and they abscond with her father. They take him off to go develop the Death Star. Mm. And he tells her to go run and that's how she ends up being alone. And they pick up her doll. Her little stormtrooper doll. These jerks. Yeah. And then she becomes a street urchin like Kanan. And Not like, well, like Kanan, but then also like Ezra. Yeah, they're all... All They're all street three urchins. Three street urchins. And eventually... But we don't even know who her dad is or anything. And, well, we that's and what I'm saying. And why would he be... His, he's, you don't know. He's almost certainly a famous weapons developer or scientist or mm -hmm. knower of things. And the Empire needs the, his knowingness to build the Death Star lasers. So. Hmm. What else happens that's super awesome in the trailer, visual-wise? Just everything, the whole movie just, shot in a unique there's way. There's like an eclipse. The Death Star eclipses, right, Ooh. the star of... How about that visual? A planet. Mm -hmm. I presume it's Jetta. Or the one with the Mediterranean jungle. I don't think it's that. I think it's Jetta. Okay. Well, because you see it. You see the, the Death Star in the orbit. It's like huge of, uh, of right. that Mediterranean jungle planet. I don't know that it's that Mediterranean jungle it is. planet. It is. And that's that's the planet where they have the the ATATs walking across and the Mediterranean planet is definitely the ATAT one. Yeah, but but the Death Star is definitely in the background in one scene on that planet. Yeah. So we there's that scene I forgot about um, the end scene where Jin is like up on some super high spire and she's limping off a. A catwalk and but she's headed toward this the end of the catwalk but oh, it looks like a device almost like uh, i don't like even maybe know so. of what you guys are talking about when the tie fighter comes up right in front of her and just floats up there oh man that looks so cool yeah. that's like every every time i ever played in like toys i did stuff like yeah. that. yeah the tie fighter comes up from below jen's watching it right now so she can remember the well, trailer she just watched it's at the ago. very end the thing we're talking about <laughs> So just skip to the end. Maybe of waiting maybe she's minutes. she's trying to run out there real quick to like transmit it's an escape transmit her plan. An escape plan of some sort. But maybe she has the Death Star plans and she's trying to get him transmitted. I don't think oh, she yeah. does. Oh yeah, who's that curly hair, long curly haired guy that looks like a Pacific Islander or something? His name is Bayes Malbus. And he's he and Chirrut Imwe are friends. Who's Chirrut Imwe? The blind guy. And they both the thought is is that they both live on Jeddah. And one of the theories is that they blow they test the Death Star laser. The first test is on Jeddah. And like it doesn't blow up the planet because it's not full power, but it pretty much destroys the planet. Well maybe they do that to the Mando planet. Maybe that's what happens. Maybe. I don't I think there's already some canon for Concord Dawn, but how it blows up? Yeah. Yeah, I do think you're right. I can't remember what it is, though. Listeners, if you remember what it is, how the planet gets half blown up, let me know. Okay, I see what you're talking about now. But just the whole movie shot different than other Star Wars movies. It's very uptight, up close and personal. Yeah, it seems more action movie-ish, sort of. Sort of. It'll be really interesting to watch. Oh, man, I am pumped. It'll be a new kind of Star Wars movie. Yeah, it will. I'm excited. I am getting more excited as we talk about it. I think I'm more excited for this than The Force Awakens. Really? Mm, yeah. 
Because you didn't. Now Tim's watching. You it. didn't know what you were getting yourself into. I just wanted to make sure that we went over everything that was important. We hit the high points. I mean, there's lots of little action. There's new ships. There's well, that Jetta planet is. Jetta planet is the has tropical this, jungle. This big, no. it has this big. Has this big structure plateau. at the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. It looks kind of like maybe it could be a Jedi temple. It's got this like city on the top of this plateau. Right. It looks super cool, and you see that that see, I structure. Think, in I think the, the catwalk a bunch thing. Of times. I think the catwalk thing at the end of the trailer is the top of that thing on Jetta. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention this scene. The scene where the Death Star is getting its contact lens put in. Yeah, we saw that one in the last one. I know, but holy cow. That image with that Star Destroyer coming across. Sure, it's oh, cool. Whew, gets me going. Gets me going. Um, I like I like all the, the Starfighter action. But my favorite part is all the ATATs. They're not ATATs. They're ATCTs. They're all terrain cargo transports. The big ATATs are ATCTs. For reals. How do you know that? I uh, so I can't remember what something leaked or something. Oh no, it was on display at at uh, celebration. They had a model of it and it. Said right on it, ATCT all terrain. Is that just so they can sell me another Lego? Well, it makes sense. Like they're moving around building materials. Oh, for the Death Star? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. Those look identical to ATATs. They do, but the ca- the thing is bigger. Mm. The cab, like the, the the storage location, is bigger. But yes, they are shorter than a normal ATAT. From original trilogy. Hmm. They're similar to the ones that are in Rebels. Well, those are prototypes. Right. I don't know if I believe you. I'm you don't have to, to believe me. You know how you could figure this out? I'm Googling it right Just now. Just do AT-CT. at Have you guys ever heard anybody nope, call wrong. them at-ats? Yeah. Altering construction transport? Oh, whatever. <laughs> What? That's what it stands for. It sports two legs. The ATCT was equipped with small but powerful tractor, blah, blah, blah. No, that's a Legends BS thing. What? At, at? No, at, at is something that people would say. Weird people say it, but people do say it. I say at, at sometimes. All right, weird people. All right, sorry, I'm sorry, A-T-A-C-T. Oh. Ooh. What's a A-T-T-E? That's the thing that you got, Tim. Yeah, but what, how would you say that? I don't at know. At Tay? Say A-T-T-E. <laughs> yeah, I got Tim. Tim just had his birthday, and he got the you. That's captain. why you brought it up. I got Rex's just wanted A-T-T-E. To oh, man. Tap your own back. No, I've, well, I've, I don't care. All-terrain I've, tactical enforcer is what it means. Okay. I've wanted that since he got the uh, we watched that Captain Rex... Whatever it's A-T-T-E. called. A-T-T-E. Lego set. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So it's the AT-ACT? Yes. If you're a weirdo. At-ACT. 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 Sounds like... Yeah, uh, Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks. Yeah, thanks. All-terrain armored cargo transport. Oh my gosh, you're go. right. I hate when you're right. Sometimes. Kaboom. Yeah. How how soon can you buy tickets for this? They came on sale like three weeks. Oh. Or no, they came on sale in the end of October. Wow. For the previous one. Are we taking that day off again? I will be. All right. I think I already have it. I'd certainly have it off. I'll have to. My last day of work check. is like December 9th. Oh, because you have shut down or whatever? And eight trillion days left to you. Gotcha. Do we do we have more to say on this trailer? I just I don't I can't think even, so. I can't even handle how awesome it is. I hope the final soundtrack has the same tone as the trailer. Oh, that that m- mournful minor key piano music. Yes, Whew. Whew. it's good. It's real good. Oh, uh, the notable thing at the end where Darth shows up. You see the yeah, back I, of his helmet and his little his egg. Yeah, the Vader egg. We knew he was going to be in I know what that, is a but we Vader didn't mention egg? it. It's he's his... not in the Vader egg. Uh, he's, he's not. He's on the bridge of the Death just, Star. He's standing up in front of a big... Is he? 
in, it looked like it's the red mat, like the red plexiglass mat yeah. that's on oh, the Death yeah, Star. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. What is a Vader egg? His it's, hibernation chamber. It's from Empire Strikes Back. Why does he have to hibernate? He doesn't. Well, it lets him take off his, his respiration stuff. And it's like a... He's got a Super Nintendo Chalmers in there <laughs> for when he goes through <laughs> hyperspace. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's an egg. <clears throat> it was in Tarkin. You don't remember that? Tarkin? The book. I yeah, didn't read that it. book. Oh. Mm. Hmm. Sorry. It's almost like you don't even have a Star Wars podcast. Almost. All right. We have so many. So we're all super hyped for the movie. That's yeah. the executive summary. It's a good trailer. We have so many emails. I can't even handle it. We have 22. Are we ready to do that? Yep. Start reading. All right. Let's go. This is from uh, listener Linda, who should have been in Nerd Squadron, but she hadn't emailed us in like two months. I guess she'll just have to make it up to us. She will. Uh, yo, it's been a while, but I wanted to tell you my thoughts on Lost Stars before I listened to your episode on it. Uh, overall, the book was fan flippin The characters were amazing, and I felt like I was reliving the original trilogy from a whole new perspective, which definitely gave some events, especially the destruction of Alderaan and the Death Star, the gravity that the situation really deserved. I can't remember the last time I've been so sucked into a book before. One day I literally <coughs> spent... A four hours staying up late reading it and I have the world's worst attention span. However, I did have a bit of an issue with the ending. Don't get me wrong, I flipped out when I first read the word Jakku and I love that it ended with a little setup for The Force Awakens. Did not expect that, but I was disappointed by Sayana's ultimate fate. It did make a lot of sense, but it is not the ending that I wanted. I felt uh, it felt too wishy-washy. I felt like the whole book was leading up to them getting back together, and ultimately they did, but it just felt a bit unresolved. I think that Thane was right about that, uh, the decision that the Rebellion would have, would have regarding Sienna, but not seeing it happen was disappointing. Like I said, though, given the context of all that was happening in the galaxy, it made a lot of sense, so maybe I'm just being idealistic. But I was very upset that such a fantastic book left me with such a meh feeling at the end. I haven't heard anyone else complain of the same thing, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the ending, or if I'm alone in my opinion. Uh, commenting on that piece of your letter, other people wrote in and expressed the same thing, and I think we talked about it on the yeah, fan I, feedback episode. I definitely had the same wish it had a real ending. I don't, I don't mind that. Like that you leave it a little open-ended. Not everything... It, it, felt a lot less like a normal Star Wars book through the whole thing, and that continued the tone of it not being the same. I didn't I need a complete that, resolution. I thought that if they had a super happy ending, it would just seem corny at the end, and it wouldn't... It would just seem like a... It flies in the face of the whole, the whole theme of the book. Well, if you don't want tragedy. it to have a happy ending, have it have a tragic ending. No, I liked the I thought, I mean, mm. I was satisfied because I felt like everything was going to be okay and they were going to get together eventually. I was just happy that she finally let go of her duty or whatever that she felt towards the Empire. The Empire. So that made me feel like, okay, now they can be together once she gets out of there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you nailed it with your comments about uh, it adding more weight to Alderaan and, and the second Death Star. I think it anything that further explains... The events we see in those movies uh, does that. I love it. That's why I started reading all the extended universe stuff, was so that I could learn more about what was happening around it, feel more impact. Um, sh uh, she says, P.S. I finally finished my Ray cosplay. I've attached a couple pictures. Uh, I'm going to try submitting to Rebel Legion, but we'll see how that goes. I made everything myself, including the staff, except the pants. Would it be cool if I shared it on your face? Yes, she totally shared it. If you haven't seen it, her costume is great. It's hyper ra uh, accurate, and her uh, her staff is super cool. Yeah, super cool. She did a great job on the costume. But she, I asked her when she was going to make the stormtrooper goggles. Oh she, yeah, uh, she said I thought about it. It was way too hard. Yeah. So. Uh, go check out the Facebook page. You can see the visitor posts and uh, you can see her costume. Some other people started posting cosplay on that same thread. 
So if you guys want to start sharing cosplay, feel free to post it on the Facebook page. Uh, and maybe we should. Maybe we should just take people. So if you send a letter with the cosplay pictures, we'll post it for you if you want. Unless you want to write your own stuff, which you may. And then do whatever. Do it however you want. Get off my back. Uh, next letter. Oh, thank you, Linda, for coming back. Anthony. He writes in... Um, I don't know what Wednesday, Wednesday Homeboys is, but it sounds rad in name. Uh, Anthony, it is a little Facebook group where we uh, talk about comic books every week. A lot of times people will post like the books that they got for the week. They'll just take a picture of them, and that's pretty much it. My haul. And, and everybody goes, oh. Yeah, we've talked about how underwhelming it is. It's not underwhelming. It's awesome. So, Anthony, if you want in... Uh, send me a message on Facebook or whatever, and I'll add you to the group so you can join in. Uh, he says, Josh, I am pretty stoked. I don't know about what, but I am. I was stoked about the feedback episode, but I'm always super behind on listening and writing in, so I missed the feedback episode. Well, here's another one, buddy. Uh, to clear things, some things up, Aziz is neither Mexican nor Indian. It's Lebanese. Do you not remember the kid from the beginning on the fifth element? Aziz. Light. I remember. I vaguely remember the beginning of Fifth Element. Ugh. So much of the rest of the movie overshadows the beginning. I don't know. The beginning's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to inject some Canadian geography into your brain right now. Are you ready? Ready. Most Southern Canadian would be because I live in the furthest, or is it farthest? Josh? It's furthest. Josh, time for a language lesson. He says, South Mainland Canadian area. Hold on to your butts. Uh, he lives in Essex County, which, if you listen to Comic Nerds Unite, we did a review on Essex County, which was a graphic novel by Jeff Lemire. And about Essex County? It is, yes. It's about Essex County oh. and, and these people that live there. I want to go these there These weirdos that live in Essex mm. County. Here in Windsor, the U.S. is actually directly north of us. Yep. That's true. But he's not going to lie to us, right? I used to drive north across the border to get to work when I worked in Detroit. This is where Journey is referring to when they say South Detroit. Not really. Uh, Meg calls me Azzy because of a Wheel of Time character named after me. I still hmm. don't know any of what that means. But he linked Wheel of Time is a... I think Super Meg... Or not Lady Super Meg, Meg. Lady Meg. They're in this Wheel of Time group. The guy I work with that knows her met her from that. Remember I told oh, you about yeah. that? It's like a big... Yeah, Wheel of deal. Time is a big... Uh, book series. Fantasy book. Okay. Uh, keep up the great posts, guys. Still haven't read or watched or listened to any of this extra Star Wars stuff, but I am getting my fix through you. The shorter podcasts have been acceptable because the frequency is keeping me satisfied. Oh, satiated. I remain skeptical, however. Now I have to go finish the feedback episode. So, uh, yeah, I love the short episodes. We should record a big block. He said he doesn't. I know. So he... So do him and Meg know each other is that what he's saying uh i don't i don't remember the the context for the meg calls me as he kind of i don't remember I think that either maybe did a tweet or something oh, okay uh, we're so far behind it's hard to there's so many strings of yeah inner communication yeah we need we need to record more often uh let's see here. you should trade some of your kids in yep uh next one is from coxtomus prime he says the reason squirrels eat wood off decks is because they are cleaning Sharpening. Oh, oh, Josh got it. Never, never mind. Carry on. <laughs> Squirrels are disrespectful, uh, censored. B holes, BT dubs. I have a giant avocado tree in my backyard, and a pair of squirrels eat a quarter of each avocado and then throw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just picturing that, like where the squirrel is up in the tree and just like looking at you, staring at you eating that avocado, and, and then just, like just drops it. Oops. And then grabs another one. Yeah. Sorry, Coxtimus. Guess I dropped another one. Thanks. Thanks Mocking for the avocado, bro. I'm really surprised they eat avocados at all. I'm not. Why They're delicious. They? I just, I don't know. I can't picture them eating like a, f I don't know. The best part is that he has an avocado tree in his yard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How awesome would that be? That That'd is be awesome. Great. Where does he live? He lives in California. I told oh, him he should send us some of his, his giant cottos. I don't think he used that term. Uh, he I've never heard that term. It, he probably said something cooler. 
You, you didn't say anything. No, nope, he did. He said Cali Cados. He said, I'll mail you some huge Cali Cados. <laughs> Boom. Uh, <laughs> Told you I thought you cool. asked him to mail you some big yeah. Cados. I'm sure you did because you think I make up words. But you know what? I, that's what I Coxibus thought you were saying. makes up words too. We're weird, bro. Maybe they call him that. I told Cali. him how weak your guac game was. Yeah, I remember that. And you're lying. <laughs> there are people that crave my guacamole and ask me to make how it. How many of them are the your your family? None. Oh, oh. My family doesn't like how guacamole. How many of them are your employees? None. I'm talking about April. April? She said that mine is better April? than yours. She's oh, had mine, whatever. and she's had yours, and she says <laughs> mine's better, and she's always asking me to make Where it. Where is she from? Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Doesn't mean she That's can't. all you need to know. Doesn't mean that she can't have <laughs> a good all, taste for that does. guac. That's precisely what that we means. We are three letters in. Uh, okay. my, wait, Tim, isn't my guacamole good? Mm-hmm. It needs more salt, always. No, it doesn't. Yes, it, yes, does. it does. You never it, put enough salt in it. Whatever. Uh, Rob, fa, Rob, Rob F. Uh, he says, "Dear S W N U, especially Josh." He told you us know, how to pronounce his name. Can I? Yeah, he did. In a, a future what was email, it? it was like Findison, right? Oh uh, no, I gotta no. find it. It was Findison. Find. Uh, fin- I'm gonna find it now. Yeah, you're right. He did. Um. I've been noticing this theme in the letters where everyone talks about how Josh Finn Dyson or Jenny Finn Dyson. are their favorite or their why they listen to the podcast and no one ever says anything nice about me. They just kind of throw me in as a side like way to keep them on track. Yeah. Tim. <laughs> well, um, people like you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm sure they people do. People like you like the amicable doorman at their their hotel. Yeah, they tip him at Christmas, yeah. but otherwise exactly. they no. just pretend to be hey. nice to him. Open that door. Yeah. Don't don't forget your place. Okay. I'm going to open this door to the letter. <laughs> right. uh, one complaint I've heard about Star Wars is the there's no sound in space line regarding the blasters and the space battles. While this has not bothered me in any science fiction media, it makes me it made me wonder, would a mass of superheated plasma travel... Hold on. You skipped Oh, he emails. said Science Corner question. I was going to... You skipped s- multiple emails here. No, I didn't. You skipped his August 1st one. I am on August 1st. Hmm. My inbox says this one went first. Oh. Maybe he did. This is a fiasco. We're <laughs> so far behind an email, we can't keep it straight. I don't I don't even see that one. Well, I'll read it. All right, do it. Dear SWNU. Woo! I'm Nerd Squadron <laughs> official member. Yes, he is. <laughs> Just to add my two cents, I prefer the episodes. I prefer when the episodes are as long as they need to be. And not crammed or stretched to fill a certain time frame. <laughs> well, I usually like longer episodes. I prefer when you cover a comic issue or a TV episode when it's fresh in your mind. So shorter episodes are better in these cases. I also really enjoyed the feedback show and think that you should consider making it a regular thing. I agree. This one is sort of a feedback show. If we ever catch up an email, we won't have feedback I shows. Right? I don't think we're going to need to do that because we get so much email now every time we do an episode. Just my opinion for what it's worth. I love the show, and it made the cut easily when he cleaned out his podcast subscriptions. Thank you That's for the good awesome. work. Yeah, that makes me nervous whenever that happens. Hey, Rob, have you reviewed Star Wars Nerds Unite on iTunes yet? If you haven't, you should. And Stitcher. And Google Play. That's so here's here's his answer. next email. Um, Sorry. It's a science corner. No, the next one is, sorry, I keep tapping his name instead of his thing. You asked for letters, so here's another one. I had to laugh while you tried to pronounce my name. As you might imagine, I hear all sorts of things. People try to say it, especially as I was in the military, where we go primarily by last names. I actually had to make up a little ditty to help. Pretend you're swimming in the ocean. You see shark's fins. You know you are going to die, so you repent of all your sins. Finn Dyson. <laughs> or you can call me by my nickname, Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, enjoy the show. So, Diesel. Rob, if you're going to go by Diesel, you need to change your uh, your Gmail name and just call it Diesel. Diesel 
Thin Dyson. Love it. Yeah, your stuff is just in different order than mine. Yeah, I don't know. Just in I'm presuming order. that mine so got is it mine in the right too. timing. Mine's probably with like yours, Tim. Uh, can I read the science corner question now? Yeah, sure. The D went on complaints, sounds in space. Uh, he, he says, uh, would a mass of superheated plasma traveling at high velocity that comes into close proximity of the fuselage of a craft create enough of a disturbance in said structure that a sound or vibration might be heard or felt by the occupants? On one, ha- or on one hand, that is a lot of energy flying by, but on the other hand, what would it tr- or what would it transfer that energy through to reach the craft? Boom. That's you, Josh. And then there's a follow-up question. Also, is superheated plasma a redundant term? Other than in the medical field, I've never heard of plasma that was not at an extreme temperature. So I started by answering the second question first. Okay. Because it's easier. Um, it is not redundant. Uh, the thing that makes a plasma a plasma is the amount of ions that are in the material. And for anyone interested in figuring, going to do some research, you can Google plasma numbers and lose your mind. Um, but then also how those ions are organized. So the most trivial way for a layman to make a plasma is through non-uniform heating. Um, which would be like if you stick um, steel wool in a microwave and you you can form a plasma for brief periods of time. So when you get non-uniform heating of metals, you'll get ions forming on the outside and it'll be very uniform and so it it can cause a plasma uh, before it goes to the gaseous stage. But the other way that you can do it is with a really strong electromagnetic field. And a perfect example of that is neon lights. So neon lights, if you touch them, are cool to the touch, but they are a plasma. So they're not superheated. No, they're not. Hmm. Fascinating. So that's science corner. the first plasma discussion. All right. The second one, you have to make some ex- assumptions. Um, I'm going to assume the craft is in a pure vacuum. The intergalactic ball of plasma is not emitting enough energy to just destroy your craft in the first place. And the intergalactic ball of plasma isn't emitting enough gamma radiation to kill you. (laughs) Um, So there would be no medium for the sound to go through. Sound is just vibration, and it transmits from one molecule to another. So in a pure vacuum, there is no molecule. There is no matter in a pure vacuum. So there's nothing for the sound, the vibration, to travel there's nothing to bounce into, so you would not hear anything from the ball, the intergalactic ball of plasma. But that's not the only way that energy could be transferred. Um, there could be alpha or beta radiation, and if there's enough of that radiation, it would. And depending on the material of your craft, you might hear like your own a craft whoosh. hitting itself. No, the alpha and beta radiation hitting your craft. Hmm. But it gets. It's it's really hard to discuss energy transfer without a lot of really in-depth discussion. The short answer is Stuff you wouldn't hear a sound sleep. because of sound. If you heard a sound, it would be because of alpha or beta radiation. Gamma radiation would penetrate your ship. What do you think about that, Jennifer? How does that make you feel? Tired. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have at Georgie BMX. He says, hey guys, it's me, at Georgie Georgie BMX, a.k.a. James. Greetings from Melbourne, Australia. Though I'd give the preferred method of communication, or thought I'd give the preferred method of communication a try. The Twitters is cool and all, but the character limit means you have to have a short and straight to the point. That being said, to the points I shall get. (laughs) Uh, He's He's better than me at it. He's much funnier in email form. Mm. (laughs) She's trying to she's trying to goad you into more emails. Uh, <laughs> Jen said she loved going to the movies. In a crazy hypothetical, what if Forrest Whitaker had a role in every new movie released? Oh my God, Georgie, what are you doing? Um, I actually thought about this when we went to go see Suicide Squad, and like because that was the first time I went to the movie theater since this email, and I have a feeling like for the next 
while every time I go to the movie theater, I'm going to think about that question. Uh, it would it would kind of ruin it for me. I think I'd probably get used to it eventually, but it would not be fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably just keep annoying me more and more as time went on. Like, ugh. So, but after watching the trailer, he was like less less i don't know the new trailer the new trailer that just yeah, came his, out he seemed a lot his, they replaced different. his hair he like he just looks like a different person so if it if it was like a where's waldo kind of thing like every movie he's hidden somewhere he's not like a major character and he's <laughs> just man. like maybe dressed as a woman or something different that might <laughs> oh be kind gosh, of funny what? like i have to figure out wh- where is forrest whitaker in this movie like Sounds that like a be, new game. Like he just has a play. cameo or something. That might be kind of funny. thought way too long and hard about that. Forrest Whitaker must like pop up in your head every day. He does. No. That's all she can talk about. I haven't thought about it until today. And then when I saw Suicide Squad, I thought about it. I can't believe you guys let me into hashtag Nerd Squadron. I had my earbuds in when you were going through the new inductees. And my workmates looked at me funny when I yelled, holy crap. And started laughing. So thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Thank you for all your tweets and interaction. That's what gets you into Nerd Squadron. Uh, the feedback extravaganza episode was one of the best yet. It was cool to hear so much variety from the SWNU community. And to back up a tweet from earlier, I'd be more than happy to support the amazing content you guys put together via a Patreon. You guys do a great job and should be rewarded for all your efforts. Thanks, buddy. Your uh, emails are the, all the reward we need. Well, that was longer than expected. Should have asked you to pack a lunch. (laughs) Thanks for all you do. May the force be with you. Um, I like how he said my workmates. Oh, that's because he's from Australia. I know. That makes sense. Um, Yeah. I'm glad you listened (laughs) to the podcast. I I still want to do a Patreon. I've got a lot of resistance from Josh uh, Mason pushing back on it. So we have other ideas for how we can get... uh, t-shirts and things into people's hands without doing something like that. Yeah, we're trying to figure it out. Um, time is fighting against us. Long time, first time. That was James. That was him. Rob again. Feedback. Ben Derrick is the next one. Oh, yeah, because yours was in super wrong order. That was from August 1st or 4th. Uh, Reggie is next. Oh, yeah, Reggie. Wait, uh, what? Reggie, he says, hello again, friends. Just listened to your newest podcast, Listener Feedback Explosion. I really enjoyed this episode. I enjoy hearing what others have to say about the things you review. We love it, too. Uh, Mason, thank you for reading my tweet, but that was not me you talked to at Star Wars Read Day. I had many friends in my 501st group that went, but unfortunately, I didn't get to attend. Anyways, I'm now caught up on every episode and will be waiting for the next one. May the force be with you. Does Reggie live around here? No. Oh, okay. I guess he, I don't, I think there's another email or communication that makes me think he doesn't. But maybe he does. I don't know. Mystery Mandalorian is his new email address. (laughs) Uh, Oh, here's a good one. I'm just going to read part of this one from uh, Jesus. Jesus Gonzalez is the artist that uh, helped us do our branding. I mean, he even did like a style guide. It was pretty cool. Um, you probably see this on the episode you're listening to now, the brand new Star Wars Nerds Unite logo. He was a big supporter of SW or SNU as the uh, podcast initials, but we, we all formed. talked him into SWNU. He says, uh, Hi, Tim, writing to tell you that you're right. Thinking about it, I do like SWNU more. So I just read that because I just, just wanted, wanted, that, I just yeah. wanted him to hear that to, to be hear. known. Yeah. So we went back and forth a lot, he and I, about what to do in the uh, with the rebranding. But uh, he made some really, really cool stuff. And uh, we'll, we posted some on the Facebook page already. Let us know what you think. And we'll be posting some more soon. Uh, Hopefully this weekend I'll get enough time to get everything in order. Yeah. So we so, can reveal a lot of stuff. Right. Uh, here we go. This is a Bloodline review. From- right. You, you skipped Ben Jackson. On August 10th. I have it in a different order. If you'd like to read Ben Jackson's, please do. No, I just thought you were going in order. Well, they show up in different, different orders order. depending on which client you All have. All right, fine. Or um, when your phone downloaded it. 
Reggie says, uh, he says, hello again, our nerdy masters of the microphone. Oh, I like that. Uh, just listened to the new Bloodline podcast. I haven't read the book yet, but wasn't planning on it. I do have one problem with the plot. You said this takes uh, place six years before The Force Awakens, but the First Order isn't established yet and only operating in secret. Here's my problem. They've amassed an army of people who have been programmed from birth, and not even a peep or whisper of this has made it to the ears of Leia. I can understand the construction of the clone army on Kamino being hush-hush because they were grown there. But to have an army of that scale by recruiting small children without anyone spilling the beans seems whack to me. Ugh, more people should use whack. Uh, Also, here's another question, and I think Josh can handle this one. How does every spacecraft that lands on a planet always land exactly where they were planning to go. I mean, if it were me flying to Dagobah, I would have dropped down on the other side of the planet from Yoda and spent years trying to find him. Then it would have been too late to save the galaxy and Vader and Palpatine would still be at rule. Anyways, enjoy the podcast as usual and we'll be patiently awaiting the next one. May the force be with you, Reggie. Uh, P.S. If my questions don't make sense enough to be on the show, print off this email, make a paper airplane out of it, and tell Jen to move the trash can randomly around the room and you try and hit it blindfolded without any coordinates. Ha ha ha. And he typed all that on his iPhone. Yeah. Wow. Good work. I typed my response on my phone. Oh, yours is even... Well, it's it's long. not longer. But his had way better grammar and uh, punctuation. Not, I used a colon. <laughs> no colons in his Yeah, but you put aftermath, space, colon... And then life debt wasn't capitalized. Yeah. Oh anyway, <laughs> to your first thing, I, I don't really have a problem with uh, the first well, order I, only having six years. Who said that they were taking children? I mean, I never got that well, from the book. Finn was, yeah, he was taken as a child. Yeah. And in the Force Awakens, he's not a child anymore. Right. Um, they also they talk about it in the what was the book that book right. called? So spoiler alerts, but in life debt. They talk about... Oh, you're talking about Before the Awakening? Yeah. Okay. That's what I was talking about. Where Finn's background? Yeah. yeah. But... <clears throat> That's right. I, f- I was just thinking of the Bloodline book. It's only... Yeah. So in the oh. Life Debt book that we haven't reviewed yet, this is a Life Debt spoiler, so... Bring it. Skip. It's not really that big a spoiler. There's a character called Brendel Hux, who is the father of General Hux from the movie that mm-hmm. you know. And he is well known through the Empire um, as training. Uh, he's responsible for the uh, officer academy on Arcanus. And some people question his methods because he started training kids at a young age. Um, and so he becomes a leader of the faction of the Empire that's still existing during the time of life debt. Right. And so the insinuation, and there's all kinds of weird, creepy obsession with young kids in parts of life debt that are kind of strange. Um, but it kind of insinuates that they're going to carry on and set up the program that eventually becomes what we see in The Force Awakens. Yes. So there's little nuggets of, you know, the book that build the world around him. And kind of fill in the background. But my perspective was is that because the story is being told from Leia's perspective, she only knows what she knows. Right. She doesn't know anything about the First Order. Otherwise, she would have done something. Well, we do get, I mean, we do get some from the Imperial standpoint, but. Not much. Not in Bloodline. In Bloodline, we do. No, we just, we hear that the First Order exists. Well, we hear from that lady, whatever her name was, the one that becomes the governor or governess or whatever. We get her direct... Yeah, we get her direct perspective. Right, but she doesn't say anything other than... Right, she doesn't reveal anything, but but we do get her perspective. I was just correcting your statement about how it's all from Leia's. Okay. The vast majority of the story is Mm -hmm. from Leia's perspective. Lady Carice, not Carissa. Sorry. It does seem like a lot... Went down in that six years, though. Uh, I don't know. There's just, there's just so much going on in parallel that we don't know about. Yeah, and it's been all on the outskirts, right. the outer rim, and like not even in this galaxy necessarily. Like, what I can't even think of what it's called. The galaxy, right? Well, I mean, like 
there was some barrier or whatever you could pass through after the outer. Oh uh, yeah, I can't remember what it's called either. And there's rumors that that's where Snoke's from, right? Or whatever. Potentially. Okay. Because that's where the Amaxine Warriors came from. The right, the or, original Amaxine, right. the story of the Amaxine Warriors. So on the GPS thing, I call it Luke Luke's Galactic GPS. Uh, the uh, the unfortunate reality is that it just goes at you know what the plot needs. Um, but really, I th- I went back and I thought to myself, self, how many times did they actually land on planets that don't have like civilization or military bases? And Dagobah was the only one. So that's the only one you kind of have to come up an excuse. And you could just say, you know, the Force told him to go there. Right. And it's the most obvious and reasonable solution. Yeah, and the, the nav computers know which side of the planet to put you on because they're all calculating for the rotations of the planets and things like that. Right. And that's why it's... If, if you can fly across the galaxy, you can figure out where a point of interest is on a sphere with pretty certain accuracy. Jennifer, Hmm. you were so excited about uh, there being two emails from people named Ben in the same in the same day the same they were day. both first emailers i know yeah. so i think it would be appropriate for you to read, read the ben mails those ben the ben mails and thanks reggie for the email okay this one is from ben jackson started listening a couple months ago i work in the same cubicle as jesus gonzalez and then in parentheses he has the guy that has been doing logos for y'all and he turned me on to this podcast I love the podcast, but haven't listened to them all. Right now I'm on episode 12 of season 2 of Rebels, and I only listen to a podcast after I watch the episode. So in, I believe, episode 6, they used a passcode, Alderaan is far away. Do you guys believe that had anything to do with the Red Hot Chili Peppers song, Californication, which had the lyrics, And Alderaan's not far away, it's Californication. I'm sure I'm not the first to have mentioned this or has written you guys about this, right? Also, Jennifer is the best part of the show. My least favorite episodes are when she isn't there. Maybe because she comes from the perspective of a non-Star Wars nerd or is lacking in knowledge of Star Wars. And I like the chemistry you three have. And Jesus G pronounces his name the Spanish way. Uh, I love this email. I like how... He, like, has to, like, give us a, a hint about who Jesus is. Like, yeah, you know that guy that's well, doing your logos? we argued about it. About, oh, you're talking... I'm not talking yeah, about okay, the yeah, pronunciation. Yeah. I'm saying how he's like, yeah, you might know him. He's yeah. doing some logos. Like, we have so many Jesus Gonzalez, fans. Gonzalez, yeah. <laughs> we know Jesus. We have piles Work. of Jesus Gonzalez letters in the corner. Yeah, that we don't read. Yeah. Um. No, Jesus is our man. Um... Uh, as far as this question goes, did you answer him, Josh, about this song yeah. lyrics? Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that was the lyric either. I'm not a big enough Red Hot Chili Pepper fan. I remember the song, it. and when he immediately said it, I started singing it to myself. I'm like, I don't think that's the real lyric. And then I looked, looked it, it up, and, and it's like, the hmm, real lyric. That's, the lyric. that's, that's legit. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I could see it being some sort of little hidden Easter egg that they would throw in. That wouldn't shock me at all. And then I, I said, if I had a nickel for every time Tim and, I, Tim and I have asked Jen to talk more, we could buy all the nickel candies in Holland's because you don't talk enough. I was I backing up his point that you don't talk enough. He didn't have that point. No, he, he just said he, he didn't said, like when she wasn't He around. says he likes it when I'm gone and I'm his favorite part. He didn't say anything yeah, about me talk not more. talking enough. You're his favorite part. Well, what maybe if that's... I start talking more and then I annoy him and then well, he maybe. doesn't like me as much anymore and you ruined it. I'm sorry. Her Your favorite part about this email is actually, <laughs> is actually that he said that his favorite part is oh, Jenny. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. Okay, and then we have Ben Derrick. Well, just, we need to oh. clarify that it's Jesus. Tim was adamant the first time we had a I, Jesus. That's just because I Oh, liked, I'm just going to call him Jesus. That's because I uh, liked the I'm gonna idea call him that, Jesus. that we had Jesus listening to our podcast. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, I think we all knew that it was not pronounced that way. Mm-hmm. Except for Tim. Um, okay. Ben Derrick. Hey, nerds. First time writing. 
but I've been listening to you for quite a while now. Just so you know, I've checked out several Star Wars podcasts, and you guys by far are the best around. Also, I found you on an app called Podcast Addict. I know you guys like to know where people are finding you. The first thing I want to mention is my opinion on the length of your podcasts. Longer is better. Barf. 45 minutes is just about perfect in my personal opinion. Next thing I want to mention is I was recently poking around on Pinterest and ran across a write-up of the theory that Rey is Darth Vader slash Anakin the Force reincarcerated. I know you... Reincarnated. Oh, reincarnated. Back in jail. She hates, hates people that get out of jail. (laughs) (laughs) I know you brought it up at least a couple times in the past, but this article goes into some pretty deep detail. His, I think he's typing on a typewriter and he has no end. <laughs> oh my there are a lot of drop I know, there's no end. Um, he's typing it on his phone. I was joking. Um, Honestly, I still don't buy it. Where was I? Right here. Honestly. I know you brought this up. Uh, oh, honestly, I still don't buy it and tend to agree with Mason that Ray is no one, but it's an interesting read at the very least. The link to the article is below. Last discussion point for you today. I don't think enough listeners are engaging Mason's scientific brain, so I'm going to throw a science corner question out there. This may sound weird, but hear me out. Are eyes and ears essentially the same thing? Obviously, there's some major differences between them, but they're both receivers of frequencies, right? I mean, our eyes see the direction of various light frequencies, which are interpreted by our brain. Our ears perform a very similar function as far as receiving frequencies. So are eyes and ears the same thing? This sounds like Mark Bolton wrote this question. Just receivers of frequencies. Anyways, keep up the good work. Keep the podcast long. And may the force be with you, Ben. So 45 minutes is pretty short to me. But to him, that's a long episode. That is long. That's longer than Tim's preferred length. Uh, I can't believe that there's these crazy Star Wars theories on Pinterest. Oops. Like, who's trolling really Pinterest for Star Wars? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know you could find stuff like that on Pinterest. I <laughs> yeah, thought it was like I thought it was only for my wife showing me things she wanted me to make. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. Mocha chalaca D- you know, DIY pumpkin stuff. spice latte. So maybe that's where all the, you know, I'm going to... Maybe it's a hotbed for leaks s- and rumors. I'm going to be so happy if <laughs> the actual origin for Ray we found through Pinterest because of Ben Derrick... I like the theory that 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 she's uh, the no. force reincarnated. Nope. He says no. no. I think it'd be cool. You're the one that told us. About I'm the that. one who told you about it. Are you? Yeah. Yes, I we give talked Ben about credit. It. I don't. Ben, ben and Pinterest. Uh, Maybe Josh put it on his Pinterest. Board. Maybe it's my you Pinterest. You pinned it. <laughs> I'm glad you found us on podcast or podcast addict, Ben. You should go to the Google Play Store and review us on there and on iTunes and on Stitcher. Yeah, Please. I use Podcast Addict as well for all the podcasts I don't listen to. Can you review podcasts inside a Podcast Addict? I think you can, can you put a star on it, but I don't know where it goes. Like, like well, it probably goes people see it. I don't know. Well, if you can rate us anywhere, rate us, please. As many places as you can. Like if you're in church and you're talking to an old lady and she ever asks, how's that podcast? Say five stars. Or if you're talking to a lady in church, be like, hey, can I see your phone real quick? Yeah. Take her phone. <laughs> Log into s- iTunes. Subscribe to the, us on the podcast <laughs> app in on her iPhone and uh, rate us and Glowing review us. Glowing review. Right. I, so... You want to answer this frequency question? I'm going to give a cop-out answer on the frequency question. <sighs> Why? Because I don't know enough about how rods and cones work. Because... They do both technically measure frequency, but I don't think rods and cones literally measure frequency. Whereas your ears, the fibers are transmitting that frequency to a neuron through motion. I thought it was picking up the vibrations in the air. Your ears do. Yeah. And then they, yeah, that's they pushing on a thing. Right. That a is little, doing its own vibration. It's not vibrating. It's moving. Yeah. And then a neuron sees that, basically. Well, sees. Jennifer. Measures it. You're a nurse. What? Answer this question. This is more of a medical question than a science um, question. I mean, they're both receivers 
of frequencies, but I think you could almost say the same thing for every sense, like sense right. of smell. Sort of, but not really. I mean, they're more similar than, I guess, taste and touch, but um, different, I don't know, very different methods. I mean, and a lot of vision is the way your own brain interprets things. Like you can um, trick trick your brain into seeing colors differently where you can't hear something that's not there. You know, you can't. That's a pretty terrible answer for my doctor. I'm not a doctor. You will be. You I'm will not going to be an eye or an ear doctor. I'm just saying. If I went into the doctor's office and like, Dr. Van Otrov, I can't understand why my eyes and ears are different. And you spilled that? <laughs> I'd say... It's all right. You, you don't have to understand that. So unfortunately, Ben, I'm not qualified to answer that question. Ugh, stumped him. No, they're not the same. They're, I I think they have similarities. Rods and cones actually respond to energy intensity, which is directly tied to frequency with photons. So it's in a circuitous way. It is a frequency receptor, but it's hard to. I can't say with any absolute certainty. I'm sorry. If only we had a doctor. <laughs> Next up, uh, subject, the destruction of Hosnian system and bloodline. This is from IC Spidey. He says, what's up, Nerd Squadron? IC Spidey here, newly member of Nerd Squadron. He was stoked. Uh, after the last episode of SWNU, where you guys covered bloodline by Claudia Gray, I was hoping you could help clarify something that I have been curious about. During the scene in Force Awakens where we get the destruction of Hosnian Prime, there are two characters on the balcony that I think I recognize. And then he flashed a picture and he says, is, is the girl in the forefront Corsella, a.k.a. Corey? And is the Lonerin to her left, Varish Vickley? If these are the two characters from Bloodline, then this scene in the film definitely has more of an impact after getting to know these two populace. You gonna answer him? Or you want me to? The short answer is... Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. <laughs> That you is answer. Corsella, but... Uh, we talked about that way back in the Visual Dictionary on that episode that Jennifer was in that no one probably listened to. She wasn't I mean, in. I wasn't in. That's what I said. That's not what you said. That's not what probably said. what I said, or what I meant to say. Uh, so that's who those people are. I think we said that. Our audio cut out, so I don't know. If we didn't answer your question, sorry. <laughs> yeah. It was Corsella. It's not the other guy. Yeah. It's not very Vickley. All right. So we're we're going to end the podcast now. Is that what we're doing? Because yes. we, we have like six more letters left. We recorded most, almost all of them. We were almost done. <sighs> and then the, I noticed the audio stopped recording. All right. So. Uh, you know what we need? We need one of those lights that says like now recording or on air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we need to tie it. To like a heartbeat on the computer. So that way when the heartbeat ends, the light turns off. This happens not that often. It happens like 100% more than... It should. It should. Right. All right, so we're going to end it here. I have more letters to read, uh, but we're leaving off on IC Spidey's uh, bloodline conversation. Um, I guess that's it. We launched new logo. Tell Wait, us what I you think. I have something to say. Yeah. Did you know that one of the um, Coffee with Kenobi guys is my son Nolan's English teacher? I did. Yes. How'd you guys know that? He told me. Oh. He said he thought it was, and I was like, probably is. He does a lot of cool Star Wars stuff <coughs> in his class, so he, that's really exciting. He had to, Nolan had to do some kind of homework assignment tonight, and he had to email me and his teacher, and I was like, Oh, so now he's going to know that your mom is super gen. He might start uh, giving him better giving grades. You some special attention. Or l- less attention. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm his like number one rival. Yeah. Oh, geez. There's no, there's no rivalry. Uh-huh. No, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, okay, so that's going to bring us to the end of this podcast here. Email us, letters at StarWarsNerdsUnite.com. You can find us on Twitter if you want to interact with us during the day, at Star Wars in you. We're also on Facebook. Uh, we'll respond there, and it's a good place to share things with the other fans in Nerd Squadron. Um, thanks again to Jesus Gonzalez for the new logo and the new branding. The color scheme is super awesome. 
I like the purple. And maybe this weekend we'll have a lot more stuff to show. Yeah, essentially, uh, just give you a quick rundown on what he did uh, with it. He took the colors from the famous sunset sunrise on Tatooine scene. He took all the, the colors from in there, and that's what he built the color scheme on for the logo. Um, and then he also sort of um, took the elements of the Walt Disney Pictures logo with the Magic Kingdom castle in the background and the big whatever moon thing in the background. He took that and sort of blended those themes together and built our Star Wars Nerds Unite logo. So it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. So that's all for today. Did I miss anything that we need to say? Just the network know. stuff? Did you oh, say that? no. We're on Benview Network. Retro Junkies. Retro Junkies. Uh, StarWarsNerdsUnite.com. Use our Amazon link if you're going to buy stuff. Oh, for the love of God, rate us and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, anywhere you can think of. Please. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you. We're doomed. This podcast is a part of the Benview Network. You can find this and other podcasts like it at BenviewNetwork.com.